funny, is it not? Well, guys, welcome back to, uh, Cupid. That was a, um... That was a thing. Um... It's funny, is it not? They always leave you. Such is the way of the world. The more you love, the more you lose. Oh, it seems like they'll stay forever, but they never do. I'm the only one who stays, my lovely Rose. My love is the only love you need. Okay, see, this is why I have such issues with the mother. I get what she's trying to say, in a sense, but at the same time, it's almost like she's trying to make it seem like the daughter should never want to seek out another love. Like, it's good to have a love for your parent or guardian or whatever, but there will come a point in your life where you do meet a special someone or you meet someone who you consider a close friend. And I don't know, like this sentence here, it almost sounds like she's jealous in a way. Like she, she doesn't want her daughter to try and find another love but then again maybe i'm overlooking it maybe she's just being super overprotective right now i don't know i i don't i don't entirely agree with this with this sentence and then she goes and says stuff like this you are always so weak always so loving to people who did not deserve it i told you to get rid of her didn't i I told you to be wary. I knew it from the start, my Rose. Hmm. She was nothing but selfish. She led you astray. I don't know. I don't... If she's talking about Catherine, I don't... I don't know. Catherine seemed like a genuinely good person. If anything, I would say she led Rosa astray. But astray with what? Catherine was a curse. She drove you to a love I warned you about. Oh, I see. Because now she was in close proximity from uh, Galim. And she did say in the previous episode that, um, well, not the previous episode, the first episode, that she didn't like uh, Galim. I knew she would just cause you pain. Okay, I don't like either of these choices. I'm glad she's dead. I'm glad you're back to me. I don't... No. And what's with this breathing, laughing, crying in the background? Jesus. Um... I was so worried about you, darling. She almost led you astray. Away from me. Trust in mother, darling. I am just glad to have you back to myself. Okay, seriously, what the hell happened to Catherine? Your silence bothers me, child. Well, no shit. You're saying such horrible things. Why would she not be rendered in the silence? Yeah, thank you, Rosa. Speak up for her. She was important to me, mother. I... I loved her. Mother only laughed as Rosa screamed out her pain. Rosa felt strong arms shake her awake. Rosa. She opened her eyes and was hit by a strange sadness that crushed her. She was dazed for a moment. Why was she so sad? And then she remembered. Her best friend was gone. She was gone. Rosa? How were you feeling? Galeem sat by her bed, a hand in hers. Rosa didn't realize she had been holding on to it tightly in her fitful sleep. 
She broke from his grasp and clutched her knees. Rosa? She remained silent. I came to check on you. You went into shock and lost consciousness. I can only imagine. How hard it must have been for you to see her. Like that. Okay, I they gotta tell me what happened now. I, oof. His words echoed in her brain, yet she did not register much of their meaning. Rosa still refused to speak, and Galeen fidgeted with his glove. The wake will take place as soon as possible, Rosa. I just wanted you to let you know that she's being taken care of. He's hiding something. What is going on? You know, it, it, it's dawning on me now. I'm just remembering something that I, I remember seeing on the, uh, the Steam page when I was looking at this novel. You know, like the premise about love being like a, a good thing and a bad thing, like a knife and a... being like a knife and poison, and then it used like two positive uh, references. They, they keep alluding that there's something sinister about um, the, I almost called him the Duke, the Marquis, and the mother is like so against him too. So I'm wondering if he had something to do, no, that's a bit far-fetched, what am I saying? Maybe he did or said something in the mother's lifetime that stayed with her in death. And that's why she's so critical of him. But at the same time, he's hiding something. There was a slight trumpet triumph in mother's voice. Yeah, see? She's like... He wants to get rid of her body as soon as possible. Don't you see it, child? Tell me you're not falling for this. Hmm. Rosa was tired. It was unsurprising to hear Mother say such things. Yeah, I'm, I've come to that conclusion, too. Didn't I just say that earlier? She hated anyone who came close to Rosa's heart. And that's not healthy. I gotta say, guys, if you are in a relationship with somebody, or if you're a parent or sibling, and you, ha and you have somebody who is expressing interest in somebody else, you know, be it romantically or, you know, just as, you know, just because they see them as a friend, and you get jealous like that, that's that's not good. I mean, there's different types of love out there, you know. Family love, romantic love, friendship love. You know, there's room for, for it all. And for you to get so jealous that you feel like nobody else is allowed admittance into that person's heart, that's not cool. It's not for you to say. I mean, it's one thing if the person that they're growing attached to is going to be detrimental to their health, you know, physically, emotionally, then that's a whole different ball game. Then I could say you might be justified in being very critical or being very protective of that person cuz then it's a case where you don't want you, you don't want them to get hurt. But if it's just like a matter of jealousy, like you feel like you can't quote unquote share this person, then that's just not good. And I know this from personal experience. Um, it's actually been, the, it's actually factored into a reason why, uh, my first relationship didn't work out. Uh, the relative in question was too controlling, you know, spoke bad things about, uh, the guy that I was interested in. And, you know, it took its toll and it was, it was bad because it was like, I was trying to see things from both sorry guys 
it's funny I haven't thought about that in so many years but you know it's, it's a tough situation to put somebody in because now it feels like you're having to choose between family and the person that you really care about so I think that's another reason too why I'm not fond of the mother because I've been through this experience myself and you know again it's one thing if you're just trying to be protective of the person but if it's a matter of being jealous and just being you know spiteful a vindictive person that's not cool that's not cool Rosa didn't want to hear it she didn't want to deal with anything right now all she wanted was to wallow in her loneliness The curl up inside the hole Catherine had left behind in sleep. My ch- Shut up, mother. God. Ugh. My child, tell me you see it. Hmm. Remember the look in Catherine's eyes in her last day. Look how unperturbed... Look how he's unperturbed by her death. Again... I don't know the full story, so it's hard for me to say. I don't know. I mean, these could both be lies for all I know. But then again, I mean, you can't really, and that's another thing, you know, like she's trying to say that he doesn't seem that unnerved by her death, but people react to grief and death differently. Like you can have somebody who is like a rock who doesn't seem that phased on the outside and then you have some people who are like bawling their eyes out you know really really grief stricken about somebody's passing you know so you can't really say number two although at the same time if he is guilty then yeah that that could be a red flag that he just seems very jaded you know like oh she died you know that's it end of story um, so that's possible. And then number one, which is very interesting. Remember the fear in her eyes in her last days. What does she have to be afraid of? You know, like something had to have changed in the dynamic that made Catherine fearful of him, which has me curious about what this guy has been doing. Like, I don't know how much time has passed either. You know, has it been several weeks? months years so yeah i'm gonna hit number one because i'm very curious you have seen it haven't you she was mostly hostile but sometimes when her sanity returned she was afraid what the hell what's what? Afraid of this man? How well do you even know him, child? I, I don't I don't even know myself at this point. What? What? I've known him for as long as I knew Catherine, mother. He is a close friend. I didn't ask how long you've known him, but how well. Yeah, that's true. That, that can be true. I, I, I don't like s sounding like I'm agreeing with the mother, but she has a point there. You can know somebody for years and then get, you know, blindsided by a really shocking revelation about them. Or mm. beyond the mask that he displays in public, do you even know his past? Do you even know of any of his ambitions or secrets? He was always a private man, mother. Think back, child. Isn't it curious how all his past relationships have ended in disaster? <sighs> this is sounding, this is sounding too, too familiar, too familiar. Everything he touches crumbles. This sound is so familiar. 
That is enough. That is not enough to accuse him of anything. You idiot. He is different. He does not belong. You have felt it too, haven't you? Rosa looked at Galeem with new eyes now. A hint of doubt slid about from beneath her sadness. Rosa wanted something to blame, a cast for all her regrets. Galeem seemed like the perfect candidate, didn't he? Yes, you're finally seeing it. Oh, God. It's happening again. Open your eyes, child. It made sense. Galeem and Catherine's relationship began to puter off into coldness right before she died. Her mental inst instability only served to compound the fracture in their relationship. Perhaps Galeem was tired of her and had killed her off for convenience? Or perhaps Catherine, in her psychotic state, killed herself to spite him? So how much time has passed? Because it seems very strange that a seven-year-old would kill herself. Like, she has to have been, like, in her late teens, maybe even an adult. I would hope, my God. Rosa stared at the man beside her. He is not to be trusted, child. He is a demon. Galeem returned Rosa's angry stare with a resolute look. I know you must hate me, Rosa. I am aware that I only aggravated Catherine's condition with my presence. I know the feeling when I am not wanted. He stood up, a hard yet kind look on his face. Just remember that I'll always be here for you. As much as I was there for Catherine, even though she spat me out. Rosa bit her lip. When Catherine had refused to eat, it had been Galeem who fed her and attended to her. Despite Catherine hurling abuse at him, he had tried to care for the sick woman herself. Okay, so it has been some time. Lies. All lies. Keeping up appearances. What is it that he has done, Mother? Catherine committed suicide. It was not by his hand that she died. Are you just going to leave it at that? Look at his face and tell me you trust him wholeheartedly. Rosa tried to search for the answer in Galeem's eyes. But as always, his face betrayed only few emotions. mother was screaming now. He killed her. I'm sure he did. And you're letting him get away with it. Please, my head hurts. And you say you... Mm. That's, that's low, mother. And you say you loved her. You never loved her, you selfish child. I've always known you were this selfish. Just like your father. S stop. You throw people away. Didn't you throw me away when I inconvenienced you? Admit it. You were secretly relieved I died. No, stop it. She screamed back at that last voice. Her mouth quivered. Galeem stared at Rosa in shock. The outburst had accidentally come out aloud. Okay, so I should have actually made that a little more forceful. Just that Rosa always seems to be very subdued in nature. It pulled a plug that kept the tears from pouring out. Now her vision clouded and she blinked them away ag again and again. She was not sobbing. She did not even realize her face was wet. Galeem and Rosa stared at each other, both kindred in their sorrow. He knelt down by Rosa's bed and wiped her tears with his hand. He did not say anything while doing this. 
<clears throat> and Rosa stared blankly ahead. It almost shunned her how many tears a person's eyes could carry. I loved her too, Rosa. He said it after a while. <clears throat> I know what you're feeling. She didn't know if it was her own or if mother's anger was somehow influencing her and her chest heaved. She balled up her fist so tightly that her fingernails hurt. Shut up. She spat and the man recoiled at the uncharacteristic bitterness of her words. Catherine was afraid of you in her last days. You did something to her. I know it. She could feel mother inside her head, building up her anger. Oh boy, here we go. He has to be punished. You are to blame. He has to atone. I know you were guilty. He must be punished. Elim stared at her dumbfounded for a few seconds. But the man didn't try to appease her. He only stepped closer to Rosa and wrapped his arms around the hysterical girl. Oh. Let go of me. I hate you. Let go of me. Let me go. But Gleam didn't. If you need to something to hate, then I'll accept your hate. But you must accept my comfort, too. I need you, too, right now, Rosa. You are the only one who loved me as much as I did. Let me love me. Good God. <sighs> you are the only one who loved her as much as I did. Galim's words brought back Catherine and Rose's mind. Almost at once, the anger was replaced with a sadness so heavy she couldn't breathe. Why was she so angry again? She was focusing on anger instead of pain. It was easier. The real tears came, all for the loss of the girl they both loved. Tomorrow was not going to come. There was only right now, the lost and two friends mourning a loved one. Rosa cried until she thought she wouldn't be able to stop, and Galim quietly held her. Slowly, her weeping began to subside into sobs. And only then did he speak again. Stay in the chateau, Rosa. I know you were thinking of leaving now that Catherine was gone. But I can't let you wander the streets again. I will take care of you. It's what Catherine would have wanted. Like a spell being broken, these words brought back her anger. How could you possibly know what Catherine wants? He pushed, she pushed his arms away from her. She's dead. Galeem's mouth burst and he stepped away. I want you to go. Please leave me. Galeem sighed and closed his eyes. I understand. He turned on his heels and left without another word. Hours seemed like minutes to her. She would fall asleep and awaken in unfit intervals so often that she would... <sighs> I'm just a mess right now, I'm sorry. She would fall asleep and awaken in unfit intervals so often that she had lost the exact time. Wait, she would stare at a part of the wall with no coherent thoughts forming in her mind. One would think morning should, spe should be spent in a depressive frenzy. All the reasons to grieve are yours, after all. She could wail now if she wanted. She could pull on her hair, curse the skies. She could reminisce the past, admire the frailty of human lives. Unfortunately, it was something less poetic. Pain was simple. It was clean. It was a well-sharpened knife that sliced through the heart in one stroke. No blood, no mess. Empty.
where tears were spent, there was just a hole where your heart had been. The hurt called out to you. It lingered. But since there was nothing there anymore, you couldn't find where the pain ended and you began. Rosa slept all day. The sun had gone down twice before she shifted from her bed. She stood up slowly, deliberately, with a purpose. I, I really don't know what to say about this woman. Like There are seldom times where I actually do agree with her line of thinking, and then a lot of the time she just says the most poisonous things, the most hurtful things. And then she turns around and says this. And it's like a small part to me wants to believe that she is a good mother and that she's just coming down hard on Rosa because she cared for her and she doesn't want anything bad to happen to her. But then, I don't know, like, I feel like she's... <sighs> My child, you know I hurt when you're hurt. Already a surge of power flowed within her, fueled by her grief. The power filled her up, and there was much emptiness inside that the energy seemed to saturate her whole body. Purpose was always a balm for grief. Mother, tell me what to do. Hmm, justice or retribution? Um... Interesting. I kind of touched on this matter in a let's in an earlier um, recording. Like I recorded an episode of the monster in me, and I had a similar situation come up. I'm not going to say what in case uh, anybody is planning on watching that episode or hasn't watched it yet. And basically, it came to a point where we had to make a very important decision to whether to retaliate against somebody or to take the, the high road, so to speak. And I don't know, like sometimes you do have to exact justice upon those who wrong you or who want to hurt you. But at the same time, sometimes going down the path of justice, you can go down a really dark path. Like you could turn into something you don't want to be or, you know, something along that line. But at the same time, you know, depending on the wrong the person has done, you don't necessarily want to turn a blind eye to it, you know? Like certain, there are certain things that are done that you simply cannot forgive. Like I know some people say forgive and let live, but there are certain times where you can't do that. Only question is what is the right choice? Like, is there a right choice here? Is there a wrong choice here? I don't know. This is very... Hmm. Start with his guilt, child. Uncover his lies. Crush his mask. He must pay for everything he has done. A grudge. In case you didn't see the achievement, that's what the, that's what it says, a grudge. Rosa didn't speak, but she started to form the words in her mind, filling them in her bones, giving life to every thought. This music sounds very foreboding. What have I done? What the fuck? She took a small knife and carved a symbol on the floor. It didn't need much, a guilt spell. What? It didn't aim to punish, it only aimed to inform. She needed to know how much guilt the man carried and the source of such guilt. If the guilt was concrete and came from a direct action, then she would know Galeem did something to Catherine. Where did you learn to do this? From Mother? Was Mother a witch? What? What is this? It 
had been a while since she used magic. It used to be the only way she could protect herself from the world. <sighs> okay. Mother had taught her, and now Mother guided her as she cast her spell. She needed a possession of the man. Rose opted for his voice, still fresh from memory. She focused on the last conversation they shared. If you need something to hate, I will take care of you. I need you. His words made Rosa feel the stress and confusion. Always, it was this way with him. The feeling wasn't foreign. It had been, it had been there for years. I will always be here for you. Rosa felt a violent force upturn her stomach. It was that horrid lurch just before vomiting. You failed. The spell collapsed in her brain. Focus, idiot child, or you'll lose your chance. God, what have we gotten ourselves into? Rosa tried again. This time, she focused on Gleam's eyes, cold, like flints of steel, dark and fathomless. No grief except, perhaps, for the situation. No Catherine. No pain of loss. This didn't matter to her. Their relationship was dying anyway. Where was his guilt? Rosa dug deeper. She increased the chanting on her lips. No torment, no uncertainty, no guilt. Did the spell fail again? She searched once more and found nothing. There was no guilt in Galeen's eyes. She could stop the spell now, knowing that he was innocent. If the spell had worked, then Galeen was blameless. But this absent was most distressing. Rosa desperately pushed her mind further, almost wishing there were traces hidden behind her reach. Guilt should be present in any loss, no matter how little. Don't we blame ourselves for our own loss? Don't we hate ourselves and punish ourselves even if it wasn't our fault? It didn't have to be real, but we need guilt to feel pain. Hmm. But Galeen didn't have a sliver of guilt. The vicious pain took hold of her again, squeezing her stomach with murderous intent. The pain was so great, Rosa wasn't sure if the spell had failed or succeeded. Something is wrong. Before Rosa could agree with Mother, she felt a sharp pain in her throat. Rosa clutched her neck, scraping, scratching. A sharp, jagged lump was blocking her breathing. She could feel its edges crawl up her windpipe, tearing the soft walls at what the fuck? Tearing the soft walls as it moved about. The pain did not stop. Rosa fell to her knees and gagged. Huge droops of blood splotted spit ran down her cheek. She thrashed about like a woman being strangled. Mother remained calm, unaffected by Rosa's distress. Rosa was about to expel whatever it was. Tears ran down her face. The horrible, acidic taste coated her tongue. Finally, she opened her mouth and forced the vile thing out. Oh, God. She kept her eyes shut, afraid to look at whatever had come out of her. But the choking feeling gripped her, and she puked again. The liquid dripping down her mouth thickened and congealed. It wasn't spit anymore, but blood. It gathered around her knees in a growing pool. Rosa panted. Every breath was laced with pain. But the gruesome effect had finally stopped. She wiped the sweat on her forehead. Something on the floor reflected light. She struggled to comprehend what was in front of her. She reached out with her hand, and the prick of something sharp made her recoil. She tried again, this time seeing more clearly. Rosa picked them up with shaking hands. What the 
fuck? Is this Higurashi again? What is this? Needles. In her palms were a handful of long metal needles. She had regurgitated them along with blood and jagged pieces of flesh. Oh, God. Rosa examined them with a horrid kind of curiosity. She stuck one in her thumb and it drew more blood. Why would you do that? Oh, I see. They were real. I guess to see if she was imagining them. They had materialized in her throat while casting the spell on Galeen. Rosa wiped her mouth. There was something wrong with him. Something potent and dark. Or could it be that she had merely botched the spell horribly? Something's seriously wrong here. If you... Ugh. Good Godfrey, where, where is this novel going? I knew it was going to be dark. I knew... Ugh. Man. She had pushed her limits this time. She had gone too far. But still, a tugging concern was forming. It was as real as the metal needles in her hands. Rosa tried to stand up on her feet, but she was exhausted. Her knees failed her, and she crumpled on the floor like a rag. <sighs> yeah, we gotta get to the bottom of this. Are you quite alright, my darling? Now you see it too. There's a sinister force at work. Get up. We have a lot of work to do. We must find out what he is and stop him. Rosa stared at the needles in her hands, in her hand. Who are you really, Galeen? Well then, that happened. 